Hey, what's up everybody, Ali Trafter back with a brand new video. Let's talk about something very important today. There's a lot of reasons as to why people are staying at the same place that they're staying in. And on top of that, they're not moving forward because they're making all sorts of financial mistakes. Today, I wanna to take you away a little bit from credit repair and to what I believe is going to benefit you on a long-term financial basis. The financial knowledge that you'll obtain today is gonna to be life-changing. It'll give you a little bit of direction in reference to how you should look at money credit as well as how you should look at your savings. The reason why I'm bringing this up today and I believe it's an important time is because I've seen a lot of people struggle. Past few weeks have been nothing but unpleasant. Not in my sense, not in the in, in my personal life, but rather the people that I've been serving, have been dealing with and have been observing. And the worst part yet is I haven't seen transformation in their lives. Even though all the tools and resources were essentially provided to them, uh, there was very little done in reference to reaching a level of transformation that I believe could have impacted them on a positive level. So my video today is designated around helping you understand, you know, some of the elements in which I believe you should look at when it comes to creating that financial transformation. I'm going to try to keep this video short and sweet to the point and try to give you a little bit of insights on your next few moves when it comes to your personal credit your savings as well as your income, hopefully, uh, to give you a little bit of direction on you know which way to go or which way to head uh, when it comes to your financial well-being. The first step I'd like to encourage you to really take is to evaluate your your you know your your uh, yearly expenses essentially, right? Look at the information in reference to how much you spent in the last year on the essential stuff and the non-essential stuff. And I'm not saying this to make you frugal overnight or take you away from all the entertainment and fun you can possibly have. But I want to do this because it's going to be a, a level of a challenge on a mental and emotional state for you uh, to evaluate your priorities. See, a lot of people, when it comes to money, uh, they ignore their priorities. They ignore the important stuff and they ignore uh, what they can potentially do and they hold themselves back because of some of the mistakes that they make or some of the habitual things that they constantly do. And it's not necessarily their fault. It's because the education was never there. And it's not habitually embedded in you and your DNA to be able to adapt to some of the structures financially faster like other people can. So for that reason, I think that it's very critical that we come together and find an infrastructure that works for us. Find an infrastructure that we can come together and use that enables you to essentially move forward, to go to a position where you can comfortably say, hey, I'm in a better financial state today because I made some financial moves that benefit me long term. And the reason I'm sharing this again, right, is to give you some insights, some tools and resources to help you move forward in a level that hasn't been done before. Right? There's a lot of people and gurus out there who will educate you and give you knowledge and teach you about personal credit and some of the tactics and tools on how to fix your personal credit. But the one thing that doesn't go with you is that there are certain levels and skills that you need to bring alongside with that to really make your while worth your while, essentially. To really elevate your financial position to a structure in which you can reliably use to grow your wealth time and time again, a proven system per se. So bear with me on this one, okay? So evaluate your yearly expenses. Look at the priorities in reference to what were the essential stuff you spent your money on, what were some of the non-essential stuff you spent your money on, and dig deep as to why you did that, why you spent that money in the first place. Obviously on the essential stuff you need to, you need to survive, so you need to feed yourself, you need to clothe yourself, and obviously uh, get a shelter to stay at home. But the non-essential stuff, what drove you to make those decisions? And I want you to be realistic. And a lot of people will say, well, look, I had to put myself in a credit card to educate myself. So I spend money on some of these programs and courses. And uh, obviously, you know, I, I needed to learn that information. And the other side of this is, OK, well, that is true. You absolutely needed to spend money to get to that point where you can use that information and knowledge, hopefully, and you educate and you invest in yourself and your well-being and your financial ability to earn more. But on that note, okay, on that note, I want you to explain to me or ask yourself if you're going to write it down and create a self-assessment, right? This is what we're doing here, self-assessment. On that note, I want you to ask yourself, 
based on the information that you're giving yourself in reference to, hey, I needed to invest in myself to learn this information. How much of that have you used? And where has that brought you today? Essentially, that course that you took, how much of that have you taken action on? Have you implemented every single strategy within that course that you've invested on to move yourself progressively forward, right? Uh, what we see here, and I find myself guilty, guilty of the same situation uh, way back when, when I used to invest in all these type of courses and I was just looking for the next best, um, you know, shiny object syndrome. What I realized was I was hopping from one course to another. I was looking for the next high, right? Something that can give you more information, something that I can take and use that information and say, wow, this is really cool. I can use that information now. And then, oh my God, there's another course coming out. I really want to invest in that course and so on and so forth. It was just a lot of back and forth. There was never a sense of stability in that. And that's actually a very dangerous thing for me. And I, I realized soon that I was wasting a lot of time on doing these type of things. It never really amounted to anything. So I ask you again, seriously evaluate your priorities, your essentials and your non-essentials. And if you do feel that investing in a course or something of that nature was an essential contribution to your expenses, and investing in yourself. Then the next best thing on a self-assessment is to see how much of that course material have you realistically implemented to hopefully move you progressively forward. And if not, then what are some of the things that are holding you back? Is it that you fell for shiny object syndrome? You found the next best course and you just continue to you know, hop from one course to another? And that in itself is a spending spree which essentially erodes a dangerous spending behavior. You don't want to encourage that kind of mindset and essentially encourage your, your pocket or credit ability to gear towards that. You want to try to analyze these expenses to, to your best you know, ability in order to refrain yourself from making those mistakes. It's very critical. So I want you to look at that. Look at these essential expenses and non-essential expenses. Really take the time to write them down and evaluate because you absolutely need to do that. You know, once you're, you're finished with that, uh, obviously our next step is really to see what are some of the habitual changes that you can make on a personal level, hopefully, uh, to get you to a position where you're able to comfortably maybe cut away on some of those expenses or prevent them from happening again so that you have a cash war chest for emergencies and or investments in the future that will actually legitimately move you forward on the ladder of wealth, which is very important, by the way. So if you look at the pandemic, uh, you know, a lot of people are actually surviving on the stimulus money on the SBA funds. They barely had any savings and whatever little credit they had left, they're almost close to tapping it out. And I can see more than ever now, people are getting desperate in reference to finding a quick turnaround and a solution, the magic pill. And there's going to be a lot of sophisticated individuals out there who are going to take advantage of your vulnerability and try to teach you that, hey, there are solutions out there. All you got to do is invest your last little bit of dollars into a fast, quick pay solution. So they'll drain your ability to earn. They'll prey on your weakness and your vulnerability. So it's very important, very critical at this time. It's ever so crucial to pay attention to that to pay attention to your vulnerabilities because this is where you'll be at your weakest. This is probably is gonna be the time where you're probably uh, as vulnerable as ever in order to spend that money. And you might even spend it. So what I'm trying to tell you here is think carefully. Think carefully on your next few moves. Do the assessment. I encourage you to look through your yearly expenses on the essentials and the non-essentials. Evaluate why you made those decisions in the first place. Study your vulnerability, prevent it from happening. You are your own insurance policy. You have to use that information you have about who you are and, and encourage yourself and invest in yourself the time, not necessarily by money, but the time to strengthen those weaknesses that you have. To not go with the Jonases and spend every two seconds because other people are doing so. To not fall for the shiny object syndrome. To do your research on the next steps in reference to your life, in reference to how you want to conduct yourself, to take yourself to a position in your life where you'll feel more financially confident, but also feel good about the fact that you have full control over the elements over your finances. So I just wanted to shoot out this quick video to encourage everybody to not be afraid to invest in yourself for sure, but understand yourself first. 
And the best way to understand yourself is to look at the characteristics of your previous behaviors. This is the time for self-assessment like ever before. And I encourage everybody to take it upon themselves to do that. So I hope this video gave you some insights. Hopefully you look forward to something that you can do. A quick little exercise for you guys. And share below in the comment section, uh, what are some of the biggest changes that you would like to see on a personal level with you to date? Doesn't have to be personal credit, but on a financial level, what are some of the biggest changes that you'd like to see moving forward in your life for the last few months of the 2020? So leave it in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to give it a thumbs up. Share this video with those that need to hear this. It could potentially help them gear towards a better future, hopefully. If you haven't subscribed and you've been watching me for a while, consider subscribing and turn the notifications on to all. So every time there's videos like these, you'll be the first to know. With that said, this is your guide and mentor, Ali Tarafter. Catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.